is built across platform desktop apps. Um, so let me just go further a bit. So I gave this talk, not this one, but the previous one, like last year, on how to get excited about it. And now I'm like introducing about it. So it's kind of like an inverse. I'm like, I should be introducing first, then get excited, right? But anyway. <laughs> so you can watch my previous talk, which is very different than this one. So I purposely make it different so that you have to watch this one. <laughs> so it's like kind of like, uh, uh, you know, it was in a talk JS. It's a JavaScript meetup. Now it's a PHP meetup. So I'm like here for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> so about me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Chian. I'm a front end uh, engineer. You might have seen me somewhere here uh, on TV last week. Uh, it's like an interview thing on like channel, channel eight news or channel news eight, is it? Yeah. So, yeah. So I don't really do much PHP, uh, but I work with a lot of like uh, PHP developers, you know, in my company. Uh, yeah. So kind of like, so Mike says that uh, Slack uh, runs on PHP. So, uh, and then according to this Quora page, if I zoom in for the like. So, oh, like Slack runs on like the LAMP stack. So, uh, actually, I don't know what LAMP stands for anymore. Like, A is Apache, M is MySQL, uh, P is PHP, right? L actually stands for what, really? Linux, right? Okay, okay cool. Totally forgot. <laughs> it was like so old. <laughs> and then uh, I tried to like double confirm if it's really like running on PHP. So, I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, okay, where is it? Uh, PHP, cool. And then, uh, so, Slack, uh, if you use Slack, uh, so Slack runs on PHP, right? And then, uh, wait, let me do this thing. So this is Slack. So this is the desktop app for uh, Slack. So kind of like Slack runs on PHP, and then Slack's desktop app is built with Electron. So somehow it's related <laughs> that way, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> so kind of like, yeah. So. Electron uh, is kind of like uh, a framework for you to build desktop apps with uh, web technologies. Uh, so it, there's no really there's no PHP. It's mostly JavaScript, HTML, CSS. So it's purely just that, and uh, a bit of like Node uh, JS and a bit of extra API calls. So uh, last last month, I think March, April, May, June, yeah, last few months, like last month, yeah. So they finally released like the final. Uh, version of like 1.0 so it's kind of like stable so you can use it right now so previously it was like 0. Point something a lot of things breaks so now it's like very very stable uh, still something breaks but yeah anyway <laughs> uh, yeah it's 1.0 so it should be stable so uh, a lot of things you know like um, so in this uh, in this topic right I, I'm like I'm not going to like show a lot of code um, so the thing is like it used to be very difficult to build electron apps like from my experience so i started like from like 0 0.1 or something and it was like oh my god so difficult and so many steps just to build one single desktop app for all platforms so it turns out that uh it's actually quite easy right now so it's kind of like uh if you want to know like how big electron is so it's kind of like actually quite big you know, i'm like surprised uh, so slack is one of them uh atom uh, which is like the editor that you can use like it's built by GitHub. So it turns out that there's a lot of really big uh, like apps uh, like on small apps, I guess. Yeah. So a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of them. Like even like Brave Browser, you can build a browser with Electron. Really weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's kind of like, um, like now you can actually build desktop apps. And these are like the companies that, that kind of like prove that it's stable. So let me go on. So um, previously, I said like you know it's very hard to start. Uh, there's too many like packages. You know, if, if you are in the Node.js world, right? It's like so many packages you have to download. You have to like uh, a lot of like, npm install and stuff like that. So it turns out that uh, so I was like looking at this like last like few days, and then like how to like do a quick start, and it's really quick. <laughs> so it's just like three lines. So previously it was like few few like few lines like yeah. So I kind of like can show uh, this kind of thing, yeah. So wait, where is it? Mm. Can you guys see the thing? Mm. 
So it starts from like here. So it's like git clone this thing, this uh, this repo, and then uh, you like you know run a lot of stuff like your CD to the folder and npm uh, install. So it just like do everything for you, and then uh, you can just uh, you know npm start. And then oh done, <laughs> so you got a, a desktop app, you got a hello world, you got your uh, like a web inspector thing, so everything like HTML, everything is like oh you can tell you like it runs a uh, Node six point one um, Chromium and Electron one point two point five, so it's kind of like building a web page inside a desktop app. Yeah, so if you like thinking of building desktop apps, so it's kind of like nice to finally do it uh, in a much easier way uh, like yeah you know you, you do all the UIs and CSS and stuff like that instead of like some other other frameworks or other languages so kind of cool and this is uh, the quick start which uh, I find it like too short it's a bit like too easy actually yeah and then um, so most uh, this is kind of like my, one of my project so I can show you guys like the code uh, a bit. Hmm, let me see about this. Hmm. White background, sorry. Wait, wait. Let me just. Hmm. Okay, no, I cannot, oh, I cannot. Shit, how do I do this? <laughs> Different team, ah. Wow. How do I switch? <laughs> Mm. Hmm. A bit difficult. Oh, like, yeah? Wow, I have to switch teams now. <laughs> Alright. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, the syntax team. Okay, one light. Okay. It should be. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Wow. And then, like, okay, just hide this. Hmm. Okay, big enough. So uh, it's actually quite like easy. Like you know, it's just like one single uh, variable for every single thing. So everything is inside electron.app, electron.browser window. So you might you might find it uh, like weird because uh, if you let's say if you used to build desktop apps before, like in the older days, if you think about it, like Adobe Air, uh, there used to be like Adobe Air, and then uh, Accelerator Titanium. And then uh, there's also the like comparator, the uh, Node WebKit, or NWJS. So most of them, uh, if you build desktop apps, you always think about Windows. Like the first thing that you like think of building is like a window of something, like a window of toolbar, status bar, sidebar. But then uh, for uh, Electron, uh, it starts with a, like a like a JavaScript file instead. So it's kind of like it starts with a script that will run something. So it's kind of like from this script, it will actually create the window. So instead of like create the window first, then uh, run the script, then it will like create. The, it, it actually starts from the script first, then create the window. So it, it's kind of like a single process that you can spawn multiple windows if you want to. Uh, so it gives more flexibility in that sense. If it's like other frameworks, it's always like one window, and then you'll be like, you'll be like uh, okay, now I have to open another window from that window. So it's kind of like weird. So that's the like I think it's the differentiation like between like Atom and all the other frameworks. So it always starts from a single script, and everything else runs from here. So you create a window, and then uh, main window is uh, equals to new browser window, and then uh, load a file, and then uh, yeah, it's actually quite yeah quite simple. So there is this thing that uh, where is it? Okay. So if you go to the website, actually, uh, there's this thing which is really nice uh, here, actually. So I guess like the the GitHub guys or whoever they are, right? <laughs> so they they found that a lot of people have a lot of problems trying out the APIs. So if you think about desktop apps, there's actually a lot of things you can like create custom. Like windows with like multiple like shapes, if you want to, it's not always square. The, the windows, it's like in WinM or whatever, right? And then uh, it can be like a, like everything. Like it can be like a uh, like 
like a right you, you know you have to create a custom context menus and all that stuff so it's, there's actually a lot a lot of things uh, if you like even go through the documentation there's every single thing for every single like like dialogue like dialogue item frameless window like uh, menu menu item power monitor uh, somehow you can like monitor something so it's all this uh, very uh, low level like kind of like low level OS level kind of thing so like um, I think most of the time you probably use like web view uh, like clipboard you can grab stuff from your clipboard crash reporter what if the desktop app crash and then you just should report back to your server uh, pretty, pretty a lot of stuff like and all this like you know submission to the map app store so there's actually quite a lot of steps and uh, this is like pretty uh, cool and uh, and one thing that you should try is actually this thing, which I'm not sure if I install this. Is it installed? Like, uh, oh, okay, probably I didn't install it. Okay, so it's like if you download this format, you will demo every single API in that desktop app. So it's actually quite cool. And then, so this is kind of like the app that I built myself, Kyoku. So this app doesn't create a window. It just creates a, a menu bar item on your Mac menu bar. So it's kind of like look like this. That's super simple. It doesn't need like special UI. So basically like you know it's a it's an app to wait. So it, that shows iTunes current playing song on the Mac menu bar. That's it. So it's kind of like uh, this. Wait, where is it? Yeah. So this is like my app uh, so it's like app.js uh, with a lot of uh, uh, stuff like the menus. So it's kind of like this. Whoa, does it work? Okay. Kind of like this. Kind of like npm start. Okay. Yeah, it looks a bit ugly now. So it's, so it's kind of like this. So if let's say I open like iTunes or something. Okay, whatever. Okay. Like whatever. And then play songs and then you like do this. So you like show the name, artist, album, and then like preferences. I can change like the character limit on the fly and then sometimes you just go I don't know go go where like yeah so it's kind of like simple okay so it's like just one single file uh, well there's actually multiple files but yeah like iTunes is kind of like uh, I have to do like some special scripting just to grab the iTunes uh, playing songs uh, yeah <laughs> so it's quite uh, yeah so it's not really a fancy at all. You can just build like a menu bar app. Like I think that's most of the use case you know, like that I see from a lot of people, a lot of developers actually. So kind of like this. So another example is a we build SG app, which is also a menu bar app. So instead of showing like menus, it shows like a web view inside a menu. Yeah. So wow, this is really big. <laughs> so it's like if you click on the like a we build. The like icon on your menu bar, it will just show like a web page actually. <laughs> so it's like super simple. Uh, this is another one. This is by Joshua. I think he's not here. So he built like something even fancier. So he built like a disk, this visualization desktop app with like like JavaScript. So yeah. So he did a very nice animated GIF of like the whole usage of the app. And uh, he kind of like you know, uh, like make like, everything looks like native. If you look at it, you know, like all the stylings are CSS, like pure CSS, uh, pure like JavaScript HTML. So this is like pretty pretty neat. You can pr build this kind of like really huge apps and really like like CPU intensive uh, or whatever this intensive like whatever apps, right? So another guy uh, from SUTD also, uh, he built another app. Actually, it's not an app. So it's kind of like it built an app to build electron apps. Oh, wait, what? Hmm. Whoa. How <laughs> Yep, we are not getting power on the 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> like, any questions? <laughs> like, sorry? Oh, yeah, it runs on uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac. It's a bit different because Windows got different UI. And, uh, oh, yeah, Node.js. Uh, yeah, and a few like platform specific stuff. There, there are a few things like, let's say, you want to create icons. A bit troublesome <laughs> because Mac has its own like icon format with like, like vector icon format. And then Windows has like, oh, from 16 pixels all the way to like thousands of pixels. Yeah, and then you have to like provide that kind of icon. Yeah, those are like kind of troublesome for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you end up as a like if it's Windows, you end up as a one single exe file. Yeah, and then Mac will be like one single dot app file. Yeah, and then Linux, I think dot deb, I think I don't know. Yeah, and then you can still repackage them into installers. Yeah, so they're like separate installers, like for you to like, you know, for people to install. And then Mac will be the DMG installer thing, yeah. So you package them into like some weird zip file, DMG file, and then uh, yeah, I tried that also. Like it's kind of complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's not very like JavaScript side anymore. It's more like native, like all those desktop people. Like it's their world now. So I have to go into their world and then like figure out how they build installers. <laughs> and then Windows, you know, there's like a lot of installers. <laughs> Anything actually, it's a it's a web page actually. It's a, it's yeah. A web page, right? Yeah. So you can do almost anything. <laughs> I guess that's the the good part. Well, the bad part is uh you don't have all the all the like UI components. Uh, you you may try like let's say let's say you use Bootstrap or you use uh like some frameworks you know like those CSS frameworks thing right that provides you toolbars and button styles right but for me I'm actually looking for for uh, native uh, elements native buttons yeah so there's a lot of like resources now people actually build like they want your Mac app to look like a Mac app and your Windows app to look like a Windows app so that's kind of like uh, nice yeah so okay oh I can come back so native fire so uh, this guy uh, Jia Hao he built a command line tool to to wrap your web page into an electron app, like in just like like th like this. So it's kind of like the command is just like native fire, and then your URL, and then it just like boom, like oh already done. So he he kind of like write a command line to package everything for you, all the icons and all those like the troublesome stuff actually. So he take care of all the troublesome stuff, and his work is quite quite hard. You know, <laughs> yeah, I can really understand that. <laughs> so he package everything. So now you can just oh launch your web page into a desktop app, which you can minimize. You can like you know do whatever you want. What anything that a desktop app can do, yeah. So super simple. Uh, yeah. Actually, there's nothing much. Uh. Yeah, Flash support. Uh, these are like kind of like the extra stuff. Uh. Let's say your web page plays Flash, then you have to embed a Flash plugin into the Electron app. So that's a bit troublesome. And then a uh, few troublesome parts would be like let's say your web page plays video, and then it can be any videos, right? MP4, uh, yeah, and then all those codec stuff, right? And then you have to embed uh, FFmpeg, like the whole thing into your Electron app. So it's kind of like Kind of troublesome. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of like this low level stuff that that for me I don't really want to care about. <laughs> yeah. So if you do like video stuff, uh, flash player stuff, uh, it's kind of troublesome already. <laughs> so this is a uh, native fire. I think he gave a talk like like in other meetups before uh, in Talk JS, I think. Yeah. And then so. Anyone here plays with uh, NWJS before? Uh, or Node WebKit? So there's uh, a few differences, uh, but I guess the main difference, uh, differences, the, the, well, the main difference would be, uh, like let's say last time there's Adobe Air, which is actually uh, a platform that I really, really like, uh, but I don't know why, everyone just don't like it. <laughs> so, because like, if you think about Adobe Air, it feels like Java. 
So it's kind of like, you know, you, you first need like a, like a Java runtime environment, install your machine, and then you download the jar file, and then you can like run the jar file, right? So Adobe Air is ex exactly like that. So you have to download Adobe Air into your uh, platform, into your OS, and then you can like download .air files. So it's much lighter, a few hundred kilobytes, but the runtime is actually like a few megabytes. So there's always that runtime versus your app thing, right? And then that runtime is very big because it includes like everything like Chromium, uh, Node.js, everything inside that. But for Electron, the whole runtime is inside your app. So this is one thing people complain. So even my app, uh, this simple, uh, the Kyoku app, right? It's like a few hundred megabytes. <laughs> yeah. So even though it's like a just simple menu bar app, it's like 100 megabyte. So people will be like, whoa, like this is crazy, right? Like 100 megabyte just for a simple, small little app. But I guess, you know, like it's, it's difficult, right? You know, it's, it's, it's always like that issue of like, oh, what if your runtime uh, got upgraded and then your app is not upgraded? You know, that, that kind of thing. So Adobe Air probably kind of fail because of that. Uh, because there's always this update thing, right? And then like to install Adobe Air app, you have to install the runtime first. So the user kind of like, oh, like install. Oh, I have to install a runtime first. Like that kind of like stop them from installing. But I guess uh, this one is just like install that one huge file and uh, you're done. Kind of like that. So NWJS uh, is sort of like uh, not like that. Uh, it also has a, a built-in uh, Chromium, but slightly different uh, concept. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Like different build system uh, and everything. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Anyway, so so there's this this guy, uh, Cindersaurus. He created a whole um, like resource page uh, for Electron apps. So everything's like apps, uh, open source, everything. Uh, so he lists all the really good apps. So the differentiation, like the good part about this list is uh, he's very picky. <laughs> this guy is very picky. So if you go to the contributing uh, page, right? Mm. So it's kind of like, oh, uh, if you just created something, wait at least a couple of weeks before submitting. So he wants to make sure that the list has like the quality instead of like quantity, because in the end you end up with like thousands of apps, right? So he's quite picky about this. Huh? <laughs> so which is like good. Huh? <laughs> And then if you submit a closed source app, so even Electron apps can be closed source. Uh, closed source in the, w in the sense that you can kind of like encrypt the source code. There's also like some sort of like encryption or like, I don't know how they do it anyway. But somehow some people manage to create closed source apps with Electron. And then uh, if you submit a closed source apps, uh, include evidence of it being built with Electron. So it's kind of like nice. And then uh, open source apps should have English readme, screenshot of the app, and a binary for uh, at least one OS. So <laughs> this list is pretty pretty neat. <laughs> so uh, awesome Electron. Cool. So if you like need more resources, check out this page. And uh, there's a discussion page, uh, which is I'm not very active at it, because yeah. And then uh, that's it. <laughs> and this uh, this is like my my links. You know, if you I can share it later if you guys uh, you know like miss some of my slides, right? Yeah. Actually, I don't have slides. This is not a slide anyway. <laughs> yep. More questions? <laughs> server side. So, so should we install any LAMP stack or web server stack in mm, Not sure about that. Mm. Mm. To get the, the red out of the way chip, how to do it? So I've never actually like, tried doing that kind of. I mean, if it's yeah. Built on node, you mm. can do like uh, uh, a HTTP, HTTP request. Yeah. Okay. You can make a small server. Yeah. Data. So if you have like you have to connect it to a server, you can you most likely you can do it. If it's built on Node, Node has some building packages for uh, HTTP requests. You can do like get requests. Yeah, request. yeah. So I this is just me assuming I have never tried it. <laughs> so there's this confusing part. Like it's also a web page, and it, there's also Node JS. So it's kind of like a lot. Like let's say the main JS just now, the main app is like has Node JS stuff. But then on the web page, there's no more Node JS. So it's kind of like. But then at the same time, you can like oh, call back to the main. 
process like hey like I need some Node.js like stuff so it's kind of like a lot of like this cross uh, cross what do you call that cross linking kind of thing yeah so that's that I think is like a bit confusing it's JavaScript but different JavaScript <laughs> yeah mm, anything else okay thank you thank you <laughs> yeah